Okay, we are going to look at this uh, final chapter, chapter five of Mill's um, work, Utilitarianism, and on the connection between justice and utility. This is uh, about a third of the entire argument. It was originally going to be published as a separate book, and it's quite complex. Um, there are a whole series of questions that Mill is attempting to address here, predominantly looking at um, objections that are being raised to utilitarianism. Um, one of the, the, the key questions is, I suppose, about expediency. Um, utilitarianism is very easily accused of being the kind of practical philosophy that puts the ends uh, as justifying the means and uh, it's expedient. It, it is um, very low on uh, principles like rights or uh, duties of justice um, or charity. And so Mill wants to kind of look at his theory of morality and justice here, and he's doing a number of things. Uh, so I'm just going to give a general outline of what he's up to in this chapter, and then we'll plunge into a reading of it. So in showing this screen here, um, we can see, first of all, that um, <clears throat> Mill is interested in um, the greatest happiness principle, but he's distinguishing between perfect and imperfect obligations. Um, our perfect duties are things that we must do because of rights. People have um, the need for welfare and security in society. I've just been looking at um, a violation of someone's rights in uh, the US in Minneapolis. Uh, there was a, a, a very um, terrible case that happened quite recently um, where George Floyd um, was arrested and a police officer um, stood on his neck and um, deprived him of oxygen for um, I think about 13 minutes and it's now a national uh, concern. There's a lot of anger. Uh, the Black Lives Matter campaign um, sees this as one of a number of violations of rights. Um, and uh, when we look at injustices of that kind, there's a lot of disapprobation, a lot of, in Mill's terms, a lot of anger in society that people have uh, certain duties that the state owes to them in terms of their security. And how do we defend these? Um, there's a danger that if you take a purely expedient uh, approach, then the individual doesn't matter. The aggregate, the sum total of justice is what matters. And that's one of the things that Mill is up to here uh, in trying to deal with this complex question of justice. So I'm just going to share another screen here. Um, and this is, um, let's just see if we can find this. Um, yeah, I'm just going to halt uh, this. Yeah, so some of the traditional objections to utilitarianism um, really get uh, this issue of, of expediency um, under their spotlight. And two examples would be um, you have a small town sheriff um, and uh, you are that sheriff and someone has committed a crime. There's been social unrest that have caused injuries and violent conflict and some rioting. And as the judge, you know that if a sentence, if you sentence an innocent man to death, maybe some local sort of um, uh, low life who's, uh, you know, known to be a bit of a troublemaker, but he's not a, a murderer, he's just maybe a petty burglar. Um, and as judge, you can sentence this innocent man, he's innocent of the crimes accused, and the town will all calm down and peace will be restored. If you set him free, there'll be even more unrest and there'll be more harm to the town it seems that the end justifies the means in such a case. You know, you can be expedient, justice can be a casualty, but the uh, aggregate good, the sum total of happiness can be furthered. Another example of the same objection uh, on expediency grounds is from Jim and the Indians. This is by Bernard Williams. 
Jim finds himself in the central square of a small South American town, tied up against the wall in a row of, a row of 20 Indians, most terrified a few defiant in front of them, several armed men in uniform. A heavy man in a sweat-stained khaki shirt turns out to be the captain in charge, and he got there by accident while on a botanical expedition, uh, Jim did. He explains that the Indians are a random group of inhabitants who, after recent acts of protest against the government, are about to be killed and um, to remind other possible protesters of the disadvantages of protesting. However, since Jim is an honoured guest from another land, the captain is happy to offer him the privilege of killing one of the Indians himself. If Jim accepts, then as a special mark of the occasion, the other Indians will be let off. Of course, Jim refuses and there's no special occasion and Pedro here will do what he was about to do before Jim arrived and kill them all. Jim, with some desperate recollection of schoolboy fiction, wonders if he got hold of a gun, could he hold the captain, Pedro, and the rest of the officers to threat? But it's quite clear from the setup that nothing of this sort is going to work. Any attempt of that sort will result in all the Indians being killed and himself. The men against the wall and all the other villagers understand the situation and are begging Jim to help. What should he do? Now, if Jim takes the expedient um, course of action and says, the end justifies the means, I'm going to save 19 of you by shooting one of you, he has sacrificed uh, justice and he's become complicit with the um, heinous, uh, uh, you know, captain in that story. And what um, Bernard Williams is doing in, in his critique of utilitarianism there is showing the problem of injustice and what's called the separateness of persons. Utilitarianism often, because it's looking at the sum total of happiness, expends the pawn, as it were, um, it, it, it views that the, the pawns as expendable in the big game of chess, as it were, of society. And the separateness of persons is important because individuals count. And this is one of the problems that Mill will address in On Liberty. Um, in On Liberty, he is going to say, the sole end for which humankind are warranted individually or collectively in interfering with the liberty of uh, action of any of their number is self-protection. That is the only purpose for which power can rightfully be exercised over the member of a civilized community against his will to prevent harm for others. Now, Mill is very concerned about social injustices in his uh, society. Um, he, um, he writes about the legal subordination of one sex to the other. It's wrong in itself. Now, one of the chief hindrances to human improvement it ought to be replaced by a principle of perfect equality, admitting no power of privilege on one side or another, uh, nor disability on the other side. Half of the population was disenfranchised in Mill's day. And he's also concerned about the abolition of slavery, which continued um, indentured kind of servitude or labor continued in uh, the East India, uh, under the jurisdiction of the East India Company. Um, that Mill was an officer in uh, or an administrator in. Uh, although he operated from London, he was aware of that and wished um, for the abolition of slavery to be extended throughout the British Empire as it was, except for India, as we said, that was an exception. So Mill's concerned about justice. He's concerned about individual rights and liberties. And he's aware that uh, under the Benthamite kind of approach to utilitarianism, which is concerned with the aggregate, the sum total of good, justice can quite easily be sacrificed. In the examples we've offered here of Jim and the Indians, and secondly, the small town judge, will illustrate these shortcomings of um, utilitarian justice. So I'm just gonna show um, 